So do you think we are a welcoming church? Yes? Yeah. In fact, from visitors and guests who come and worship with us, all the time we hear that very thing. They say we are a friendly church, a welcoming church. Not so I think today we can give thanks for that. We're not trying to brag. But we can give thanks that we continue to use the good gifts, the gifts of welcome and hospitality and friendship here in this place to welcome those who come and worship and spend time with us at Zion Lutheran Church. So we're a good welcoming church. So what about being welcome? That's what Jesus' words in the Gospel reading from Matthew are about. They're about being welcome, which is a little bit different than welcome. So let's look at these short verses from the 10th chapter of Matthew today to learn a little bit more about what they have to say to us about being welcome. Jesus says this, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sends me. The you in those verses are the disciples who Jesus is preparing to send out. The whole chapter 10 in Matthew's Gospel is a long series of instructions Jesus gives right before he plans to send them out to continue to do his work. They are going to go out and heal and cast out and proclaim the good news to all just like Jesus did. But before Jesus sends them out to do that, he's got some things to tell them. And so in chapter 10, he tells them what will be the nature of their work, what it is they should do exactly. He tells them uh, how hard their work will be, that they won't always uh, be greeted with, uh, with friendliness, but rather their work will be divisive, that the very word they share might be controversial, that it will divide people. And then lastly, Jesus shares these words, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus is indicating that as disciples go out and do this work of the Lord, that they should be welcomed, that others should receive them. It won't always be the case, but nevertheless, they do have the opportunity to be welcomed by those they go out and minister among. Ten years ago, about right now, I had one of the most welcoming experiences of my life. I was on a trip to Tanzania, Africa. We went on that trip with a group from our church up in Virginia. That church had some relationships with Lutheran churches and communities in the northern diocese of Tanzania. And we went on that trip and met a lot of those people. Now, I have to clarify what the point of that trip was. So oftentimes, when we think about Christians going overseas, we think about doing mission work. As if we're the people who have all the right answers or all the money, and we're going to go over there and fix things. But that wasn't what this trip was about at all. This trip was about going to Tanzania as ambassadors, as ambassadors from our congregation. To go and nurture those relationships that had been started with leaders and churches in the various places we went in Tanzania. Our job on that trip really was to go to be welcome. To be welcome. And that's what we experienced over and over again. We would load up our uh, vans and drive out to some rural, remote church in the middle of nowhere in Tanzania. And we'd Get off the bus, and the people there would be singing and dancing. They gave us gifts, like uh, some of these necklaces that I still have. They are made, I assume, and placed around our necks when we arrive as a sign of welcome. And they set before us food of all sorts. And the most amazing thing of all, cold drinks. Cold, glass bottled sodas. In the middle of nowhere in Tanzania, I still don't know how they did it. What a sense. 
sense of welcome we don't know. Joy and hospitality, the sure grace of those who we came among and who welcomed us. But of course we don't have to travel to the other side of the world to feel that kind of welcome, do we? Sometimes to feel that kind of welcome, we just need to go down the street. A couple of months ago, here at Zion, we had an event. You probably remember hearing about it at the time. We called it our Meet the Neighbors event. It was a simple thing. On a Saturday morning, a group met here at Zion and then ventured out to one of the nearby neighborhoods. And we just met people and, and got to know them and introduced ourselves and began conversations with them. Two of the people who were on part of the Meet the Neighbors event were Hannah Elrod and Jamie Hampton, and I asked them to share just a minute this morning what that experience of participating in our Meet the Neighbors event was like for them. Well, um, uh, Michael Kahn and I um, went down two, two or three streets, and uh, many of the houses that we went down um, didn't want to be talked to by us. They thought we were like mission people. And so I kind of felt unwelcome there. But there were a couple that actually did open the door and talk to us. And I felt pretty welcome there. Um, uh, the experience was amazing. Um, but uh, it was really scary to be so vulnerable like that. So, It's not easy to go door to door. You want to be welcomed, and sometimes you are. But you can feel like you're being intrusive. You've all been there. The door ring, the doorbell rings, and you don't want to answer it either. That's exactly how my morning went. The first house or two, people were nice, but not your typical welcoming. The next two, though, poured their hearts out. We cried, we shared together and I've never felt more welcome at somebody else's door before. Thanks, Anna and Jane. So the day wasn't a success, so to speak, whatever success would have meant, but it was important work. We began relationships with people, but it was hard because we had to meet them on their turf not ours. Hannah used a good word to describe that. That meant we had to be vulnerable. And though the work was hard, I think we all agree that it was important and at times even felt holy. It was holy work. Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. What Jesus seems to be suggesting, therefore, is that God has been vulnerable enough. God has taken a risk with us, made us the way that he might go out into the world. God could have sat back and said, I will go visit the people across the world and down the street. But instead, God said, no, I will send Jamie, Hannah, and you and me. And as they go and are welcomed by others, I will be there in their midst. <laughs> One last thing we might say about Jesus' words, about being welcomed, relates to the very holiday our nation will celebrate in just a couple of days. July 4th, we know, is also called Independence Day, right? A day to celebrate the freedoms we enjoy as America, to celebrate the tradition of independence in this country. However, as much as we value our independence, Jesus' words suggest that we are dependent on one another at the same time. Right? We are dependent on one another, and when we go into strange places, we have to rely on the hospitality and the welcome of others. We have to be vulnerable. That is the great challenge of discipleship. So let's acknowledge this day that we value our independence. But let us also acknowledge that we are wholly 
dependent on God, and that God send us, sends us into places both far away and nearby, so that we can depend on all those who might welcome us, promising us that God will be there when we do. Amen.